Six weeks is SpaceX's estimated time to gear up everything for Flight 4 right after the explosion of Flight 3. And of course it's possible, I bet my money on that. The reason they were so confident was that before the third launch, they could predict to some degree what would happen to the vehicle. As a result, several upgrades were added to Flight 4's hardware, which contributed to accelerating Starship's turnaround. So what are those? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. We know that the changes of the new Starship prototype are always based on the failures of their predecessors. As you can see during the most weighted glide back of B-10, the grid fin wiggled quite violently, seemingly losing roll control. Combined with the Raptor's problem, this could contribute to the super heavy speed becoming uncontrolled, making a soft landing impossible. Perhaps due to realizing the risk of catastrophes on the ocean caused by Booster's extreme landing speed, SpaceX activated RUD. Based on speculation, we can somewhat know what went wrong with this system. Four grid fins are actuated electrically and powered by an onboard electrical system, possibly utilizing batteries or another form of power storage. SpaceX tends to employ innovative engineering solutions, so the power source for the grid fins might involve a proprietary technology or a combination of different systems. As far as I know, several years ago, they started to apply Tesla batteries for the onboard electric system on Starship. Another news said that the batteries used on Starship are Tesla-inspired structural batteries built by a company dedicated to manufacturing batteries in space, Vista Space, Problems with loss of roll control on these waffles can come from unstable power transfers from these batteries. Or it could come from the unsuitable dimension of the grid fin for a large-scale vehicle like Starship, resulting in the new update on B-11. In May 2023, the media captured the image of the new grid fin being delivered to Mega Bay, likely for B-11 install. In comparison with the grid fins on B-10, at a glance, I see that the new ones appear to be more curved on one side. Is the curve design better? It sounds like SpaceX wants to test both the flat and curved designs in real tests. So they decided to keep the grid fin's old design or the flat ones on B-10 and test the new one in Flight 4. Clearly, the loss of control in the booster's grid fin in Flight 3 is a predictable thing. The third guess for the issues in the grid fin's roll control is about the actuator. An actuator in the context of Starship's grid fins refers to the mechanism responsible for moving or controlling the grid fins. These actuators are essentially motors that adjust the position of the grid fins in response to commands from the spacecraft's guidance and control system. By controlling the orientation of the grid fins, the actuators can influence the aerodynamic forces acting on the spacecraft, allowing it to perform precise maneuvers such as pitch, yaw, and roll adjustments during descent and landing. These maneuvers are crucial for ensuring a safe and controlled landing of the spacecraft, especially during missions where precision landing is required, such as crewed missions or cargo deliveries to specific locations on Earth or other celestial bodies. To be honest, the problem with the actuator is not new. Starship's Flight 2 was delayed once due to the replacement of the actuator on a grid fin. Although only a small component, the fins play an important role in SpaceX's goal for Starship this year, successfully recovering both stages. Grid fins are maneuvering surfaces that help in controlling the orientation and stability of the vehicle during descent and re-entry. They resemble a grid or lattice structure, which helps in generating aerodynamic forces to adjust the spacecraft's trajectory. Starship probably takes a couple of tries like with Falcon 9, but it will be easier to control with the better thrust-to-weight ratio of its 33 Raptor engines. The difference in size between Falcon 9 and Starship also creates the difference in the grid fin's design. Falcon 9 has four grid fins, each measuring about 1.5 meters long and 1.2 meters wide. These allow much better control of the vehicle in the atmosphere than small thrusters. Being originally developed by the Soviet Union half a century earlier as control surfaces for intercontinental ballistic missiles, the grid fins could be rotated up to 20 degrees and worked well on the big rocket. There is no doubt that the fins are larger on Super Heavy, but it's not the only difference. The Falcon 9's first stage retracts its grid fins during launch, minimizing atmospheric drag on its way through Earth's atmosphere. Rather, the Super Heavy's fins are fixed in an outward position. Possibly, 
SpaceX engineers calculated that the mass penalty for a system to retract and extend the fins was too high. They also believe that doing away with such a system reduced the work and time needed to refurbish the first stages between launches. Nevertheless, the grid fin still needs to be moved in pitch, yaw, and roll to steer the rocket. Unlike hydraulic fluid on Falcon 9, Super Heavy adopted an electronic steering system to adjust the fins. This electric power is transferred and moves the fin by an actuator. Now let's move to Ship 29. Although we have no idea whether there are any serious errors on the ship, upgrades to help it maintain attitude control once in space are always needed. Will there be any change in thrusters or system? As you can see, when Starship tested its ability to open and close the payload door in space, it actually looked like the door struggled to open fully. Not only that, its closing sequence was not perfect. At about T plus 30 minutes and 19 seconds, despite being closed, the door jolted inside the payload bay and began shaking, which looked more anomalous than anything. Something could have gone wrong, the door could be stuck or loose, or something completely different could have happened. Some raised doubt that not closing the door tightly released the gas from inside or even allowed the plasma to enter the vehicle, leading to the pressure decrease and impacting the structural rigidity inside. Therefore, I think that SpaceX should focus on solving this part in the next flight. The heat shield would need to be upgraded one more time even though the falling of some tiles during re-entry is not a serious problem. The heat tiles are light and fragile. SpaceX must determine improved ways to prevent the tiles from falling off during the next launch in about six weeks. Talking about Flight 4's goal, SpaceX's president and COO Gwynne Shotwell confirmed that the flight would not carry Starlink satellites just yet. SpaceX needed to focus on getting Starship's re-entry rights and for the booster and Starship to successfully land. SpaceX's president and COO Gwynne Shotwell was the star speaker at the Washington Satellite 2024 event. She touched on many key elements. Shotwell added that the goal for Starship this year is to reach orbit, deploy satellites, and recover both stages. And of course, to launch the core Falcon 9 rocket 148 times. SpaceX was planning around seven Starship launches this year, although some skeptics later suggested that this would be a tough challenge. One additional industry benefit announced by Shotwell was that SpaceX has started selling satellite lasers, already in use on its own Starlink satellites, to other operators. She said that SpaceX was rolling out the technology. We generally don't sell components, so this is a little bit of a new thing for us, Shotwell said after the panel discussion. She said SpaceX was already in talks with potential customers. Nevertheless, there is also an underlying goal for SpaceX, which is to increase Starlink subscribers and get Starlink satellites on board Starship for a more economical delivery of satellites. Meanwhile, the EU is reported to have confirmed that SpaceX will launch its satellites. The agreement is needed because of lengthy delays to the next generation of Europe's own Arian rocket system. The European Commission has reportedly agreed to a 180 million euro deal with SpaceX to launch four of its Galileo Satnav satellites because of delays to the Ariane 6 rocket being built by Ariane A Group on behalf of the ESA. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time